Hello, folks. Time for some source conversion simulations. So what I've got here is my original circuit, voltage source with a series resistor, and then a converted version with a current source and parallel resistor. So what I did is took a 9-volt source, 100 ohms. Now that resistor, the R internal for the E source, 100 ohms, is simply replicated over here for the current source in parallel, right? R internal for the current source, also 100 ohms. Then I find out the maximizing current. What's the short circuit current out here? So I just imagine I'm just putting an ammeter out here, 9 volts over 100 ohms. That's going to be 90 milliamps. So this should be equivalent to this. So anything I put out here for a load should get the same exact results. So right now I've got a 50 ohm resistor in here, right? So R1 and R2 are treating the same thing basically. So let's see what we get if these truly are equivalent. Hey, three volts and three volts. Obviously Ohm's law is gonna tell us the currents are the same too. All right, 60 mils, 60 mils. Beautiful. All right, well, maybe we were just lucky. Let's try a different value. Let's try 100 ohms and 100 ohms. So now they match what the internal resistances are. All right, so this thing should split in half. We should get like 4.5 volts over here. And sure enough, four and a half volts. So far, so good. So maybe it works for low values, but not big values. Let's try 200 ohms, right? We'll double. Sort of an exhaustive search here. All right. Do the same thing again. Six and six. And we could sit here all day and do this. Right. Okay, so let's try to do something that's totally crazy. I'll put 100K in there. I'll put 100K in there. I mean, it's just nuts. 100K! Are they equivalent? Well, I guess they're equivalent. You could play here all day. It's crazy, man. It's totally crazy. No, it's better than crazy. It's it, it works. It's a beautiful sort of thing. So, you know, where do we use this? Well, you could imagine a circuit that um, maybe we could simplify and wind up with something that is uh, too difficult originally to solve for us, at least right now. But after doing a conversion, we can solve it. Okay, I'm talking about something like this. Here is my original circuit. Got two sources. Right now, we don't have any way to solve this. But if we take this part of it and we do a source conversion, I wind up with a series circuit with two voltage sources in series. I can deal with that. So the equivalent for this would be an 8K in series, and then the voltage source, right, would be the maximizing voltage, 1 mil through 8K, which would be 8 volts. So right here, this is the equivalent circuit, 8K in series with 8 volts. So what do I wind up with? Well, this is 10K. The 8 volts fights the 10 volts, and we'll get a current that goes in this direction, but there's only a 2-volt differential between these two points. So I'm going to have 2 volts sitting across the total of 10K. Right, obviously, most of the voltage is going to wind up here and a little bit of it right there. So, um, you know, we're basically looking at 2 volts over 10K, 2 tenths of a mil. 2 tenths of a mil times uh, 2K is going to get us 4 tenths of a volt, 1.6 volts here. So if I'm looking for um, VF2, Right, or same as VF1 back here. Um, we're going to take that 10 volts, subtract off the 4 tenths that we dropped here. We should be looking at 9.6 volts. Let's see what we get. Nine point six, nine point six. Beautiful. So this technique isn't going to solve 
all complicated circuits that are multi-source, but there are some that we can, right? So it's just a good place to begin. All right, that takes care of that.